Indiana Jones, Eat Circle. I haven't paid attention to this upcoming Indiana Jones game from Bethesda Softworks that's being developed by Machine Games since it was announced years ago. Well, at the Xbox showcase event thing that, like I said in my Fable video, I didn't watch, they showed us some of it. I didn't realise there was a trailer a few months ago, which means that I'm a bit behind with this one, but I wanted to say, yes. Now, as is what I'm sure is familiar for somebody of my vintage, I was introduced to the Indiana Jones films, courtesy of a rather nerdy figure named my dad. Because there's something fun for all the family about a swashbuckling adventure. I mean, this guy is literally a professor by day, and an antique appropriating, Nazi slaying, physics defying, adventurer by night. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? This wasn't a game that before announcement a few years back I thought it would be cool if they'd made. I mean, back when it was announced, I was interested in seeing where they would go with it. But my only benchmark for Indiana Jones in video game form was LEGO Indiana Jones The Original Adventures, which I had on the Nintendo DS. But according to Wikipedia, there are apparently 22 Indiana Jones games, including this upcoming one, and I'd imagine the vast majority of them fall under the category of complementing transmedia to a popular movie franchise rather than anything special in their own right. And that is wholeheartedly an assumption based on the nature of licensed titles of the past. But how the world views gaming and gamers has for the most part changed. We're now taken more seriously. I've released the hostages, and Bethesda Softworks are no joke of a publisher, aside from when they are. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle stands as good a chance as any at not being wank, and love him or hate him, the executive producer is industry legend Todd 16 times the detail Howard. So, in other words, what could possibly go wrong? So, jokes aside, here's what I make of what we've seen so far. First and foremost, this game is set between the events of Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade, the former of which has a scene that used to haunt my dreams. More specifically, the game is set in 1937, and Sinister Forces, according to the Xbox.com game details bit, I presume means Nazis, choo -choo, choo -choo. are scouring the globe for a secret to an ancient power known as the Great Circle. And that's not what I'd call a strong title necessarily, but it's up to Troy Baker disguised as Harrison Ford to stop them. That guy gets everywhere in video games, in fact I wouldn't be surprised if you said his name in a mirror three times, he'd spawn. However from the limited examples we've seen of his performance as Indiana Jones thus far, I think it's safe to assume he's not making a meal of things. He's a good actor, not that I would know what that takes, and seems to be a good casting. On the visual front, the game looks good. It's hard to tell what counts as visually special these days, and the bar for being impressed is certainly a strange one, so I'll stick to calling it good. That way, nobody gets upset. Now the game is clearly going to be incredibly narratively driven, as seen by the bulk of this showcase being what is effectively a cutscene with some gameplay thrown in at the end to let you know that that is indeed a thing that you can do in the game. <laughs> now it does seem to be an interesting choice that machine games appear to have gone first person for this, and it does look well earthed and weighty. That means I think the game is going to be oriented towards immersing you in the experience of being this character rather than giving you a power fantasy. Apparently this game will entail exploration, immersive action, intriguing puzzles and the like with focuses on melee combat and gunplay, along with stealth infiltration, apparently. And of course, the whip will have versatile applications. And that's kind of what you'd expect, as Indiana Jones films are typically roller coasters. There's mystery, there's puzzles, and of course, good old fashioned fist fights and gunfights. Not to mention exaggerated punching sound effects. It seems as if the game's intent is to immerse you in what should equate those films. Of course, whether or not it succeeds is entirely up to it. However, for that sort of gameplay I find the first person approach to be an intriguing one. I think there are moments where it will go third person, but for the most part apparently it's going to be first, which isn't something I would have imagined for an Indiana Jones game, but you know what? I'm open-minded. Now another thing that appeals to me is the fact that this isn't necessarily going to be an open world game. I mean there will apparently be open area maps, but it'll be a mixture of those and more linear segments. Don't get me wrong, I love a good open world game, but I do get fed up with them, so it'd be nice to not have to worry about that. And it would also be interesting to see what an open area map actually means. 
Is that just an open space and you can tackle various linear segments in any order? Or does that mean these open spaces are more relaxed bits of gameplay where you can take it at your pace rather than at the games? You know, a world space in which there are a few optional points of interest that you can look into if you so wish to do so or you can completely forget about and just blast the narrative. On the front of storytelling, if the showcase that's just gone is any indication, then this is going to be incredibly narrative heavy. And in typical Indiana Jones fashion, will likely revolve around a bit of a mystery. For instance, how did this ship get up a mountain? What in The Witcher 3 happened to it? I just want to know how the boat got there. Aside from that, it is kind of difficult to gauge much based on five minutes of cutscene. I mean, surely you'd want to show off your narrative in a narrative-driven game. However, it's also a game, and you need to, at some point, showcase how one gameplay moment rolls into the next, rather than jump cut loads of different things montaged together. But I presume as part of the Xbox Game Showcase, it only had so much time allocated and prioritised what the game is about which is a story, and that's fine. I like a good story-driven game, and I like a good story-heavy game, and I'd hope there'd be time to showcase a proper gameplay demo considering this game is apparently launching this year. There's no release date as of yet, but it'll be interesting to see when it does come out. If indeed it does manage to stick to that release window, I don't like assuming that it will these days. Now it's interesting to see this game will be coming to Xbox Series S and X and Steam, along with being day one on Game Pass apparently, which is nice. I suppose that certainly makes life easier with regards to contemplating do I, don't I. I couldn't necessarily tell you how Microsoft's business models ever actually make money in the gaming space, however I'm not entirely sure if that's on the general consumer to care. Now finally, for my thoughts, I think, you know what, this does look like something I would really enjoy playing. Now the thing is, what I would like to see before the game inevitably releases is a few minutes of uninterrupted gameplay just to see how one action rolls into the next. For instance, I'd like to see how the stealth is handled, how the combat is handled, how the puzzles are presented, and how the world is laid out and see that sort of thrown together into a set piece so I can sort of understand how the gameplay works a little bit deeper than either a trailer showing me bits and bats cut together at the speed of sound or a random montage at the end of a cutscene as seen in this new showcase or indeed those clips but interrupted by various developers talking about the premise of the game and how the game's going to play rather than showing us for more than a few seconds at a time. Not that there isn't a place for that, but that's certainly where my mind will be put to rest with regards to whether or not the gameplay is actually any good, because though it looks weighted, grounded and all of that, it also looks a little bit, I don't want to say lethargic, but that is the word that's coming to mind. But with that said, I'll retreat to my fortress of cautious optimism. That said, my overall expectations are fairly low. The recent Indiana Jones film, The Dial of Destiny, I think it's called, I wasn't too keen on that. I tried to watch it, about halfway through, I think I got kind of bored. If this even grips me a little better than that did, even though it's a different piece of media so it's hard to sort of compare, I'll be happy. And if Indiana Jones eats anything remotely circular, I'll be even more happy. And yes, I'm using this as the video's thumbnail, you can't stop me. I did actually create a more serious thumbnail design and then I looked at the and the great circle and realised there was an opportunity staring me in the face. So each circle is all you're getting. Anyway, I think that satisfyingly covers what we know so far about Indiana Jones and the edible circle and my opinions on that. So I can now move off of this topic and conclude today's video. Look, thank you all for watching me rambling like a madman. I don't do this very often, but around June, lots of stuff gets announced and suddenly I start paying attention again. I did actually see the trailer drop a few months back. I forgot that I had, but apparently I had and I can tell you that because I tweeted about it. <laughs> If you enjoyed or by some miracle got something of value out of today's video, please be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends, all that wonderful stuff. It would be massively appreciated, but of course, only do that if you want to. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, please take care and goodbye.